how much would be the price of a house in a place not that expensive in China? I think Jai Yuan, uh, Jai, 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 yeah, right, I like Jai Yuan, where we stayed before. 140,000, oh, sorry, 1.4 million. 1.4 million yuan? Yeah. Okay, so that would That's be how much in dollars? $200,000. $200,000, okay. Uh, yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad, but for me it's still a bit No, no, yeah, I mean, of course. <laughs> but I'm saying like, well, also consider this is Shanghai, but it's all the way south in Shanghai. It's probably like 40, 50 kilometers yes. south, right? Yeah. So it's not the downtown. It goes back to the question of how, whether, whether we can call this home. And the problem is, I think we still cannot. Why? Well, I cannot because the moment they say bye bye to you, you have two two weeks to leave. You know, or ten days. Yeah, things can really change so fast here, and that's a little bit of a certain uncertainty that yes. we need to live with in a way, right? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to one more video of this short series of videos about living in China. Today, I'm here with my very good friend. David. <laughs> hola, hola, como esta? Hola, David, how are you? Like, because he doesn't speak very good Spanish, we're gonna have to make this video in English, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Spanish, uh, a little bit. Yeah, so, um, David is from India, and actually, we used to work together as well, like in the previous videos you saw with uh, Pascal from Switzerland, with uh, Camille from Kazakhstan, and also David, India. So we were there working together for like about five years or something yep, like that. You yep, were also there for yeah, five years, right? Yeah. Okay, Five and then, um, yeah, and then uh, actually we had the chance to, to travel together, so we went to India, uh, so we were there traveling for like a month, something like that. I only met uh, him for two days, but I think, <laughs> actually, yeah. yeah, because you came to Varanasi, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Actually, David was also exploring a little bit of India, Varanasi was amazing, yep. I think you were also surprised, did you like it? Uh, yes, yes, uh, a very different experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, it was, um, you know, like in India, it's like a lot of... Um, Secularism or a lot of yes, different it, religions, yes, right? Yes, yes. So, how would you describe India there? Uh, like in terms of this secularism, very secular. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> at this point, yeah, uh, and then you know, it's a lot of uh, Hinduism, Buddhism. Uh, David is also from Chris, uh, Christian, right? Yeah, Catholic. Catholic, and then uh, so it was just a mix of many different things there in Varanasi. But it was quite interesting to see. Also, for me, it was amazing. Like quite a nice trip. Actually, one of the best trips I've done, probably in terms of many different things to see. Okay, today we're gonna talk about uh, David's um, perceptions in terms of China. You've been here in China for how long? A uh, long time, 15 years. 15 years? Okay, actually we were talking to Camille and he's uh -huh. been also for 15 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So before talking to the views of China, can you tell us a little bit about your, um, your background? So, uh, so you were in India before. Uh, how did you decide to come to China for the first time? Or how did you even get into your, you know, in your mind? I actually uh, was in Singapore before I came here. And at that time, uh, my contract finished. So the, the new job I got was uh, either China or Vietnam. And at that time, uh, you know, China was booming. It is still booming. But at that time, there was a, a lot of uh, news in the media about China. What year are we talking about? 2007. 2007. So you were in Singapore for how long? About seven years. Seven years yeah. in Singapore? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so the option was here or uh, Vietnam and I chose here. Okay. So you could have gone to Vietnam as well? You could have gone to Vietnam as well. After Singapore? Yeah. Oh, this is funny as well because I remember you told me you were working in Raffles. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. How was, how was the work there in Raffles? Raffles is what? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a design school, one of the good design schools with people from all over the world, very good designers. I met some uh, very good people there, you know, very nice people there all over the world. Uh, yeah. Enriched my life actually, working with them. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I think Raffles used to have, I don't know if at the moment, but they had at that time, because I was also working in Raffles, but Hanoi, that was in Vietnam, I was there for a year. And I remember uh, they mentioned at that time they have more than 30 campus around Asia. Yeah. Right, so they have in different areas like in Surabaya, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, yep. in Singapore, correct, correct. in Vietnam. And yes, and, and many in China at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a very nice experience, very nice experience. I enjoyed every bit of it. Yeah. So what did you decide to come to, to China instead of uh, Raffles? What, would it be like Raffles uh, Hanoi or not? Yeah, it was Raffles Hanoi. It would have uh -huh. been Raffles Hanoi. Oh. Uh, but uh, I mean, it was Raffles Hanoi or Raffles Shanghai, and I chose Raffles Shanghai. So. Okay. I came in on a, on a single entry or double entry visa. 
and then we got that as it was in the case in the past and then they were converted into work that was the usual procedure at that time okay yeah so uh, you take within a certain period of time you convert your uh, tourist visa into a into a work visa all right so i've heard that story so they tell you to come first as a tourist yeah uh, yeah that's usually how uh, yeah, yeah. You, you used to work correct and then when you're here as a tourist then you just yeah the process in yes, yeah yeah so that we're talking about 2000 what seven, seven yeah seven. yeah 2007 yeah so actually many companies they used to suggest that because you know for them it was probably a little bit easier to more straightforward i think more straightforward yeah. yeah so and actually they they make sure that the person is going to actually come to china yeah, all yeah. the way and then they start doing the process otherwise uh maybe they would invest some other stuff for the person to come already mm. with a working visa so that's what they were suggesting the tourist visa mm. so then you were um you were here in La Rocha. I, I'm sorry, not before the rush. You were there in Raffles. How was the experience in Raffles? How how do you feel fit in Shanghai for the first time? Um, the people at work, my colleagues at Raffles were top notch. You know? uh, I felt very welcome. Uh, the uh, program directors, especially, were uh, were. Uh, we went all out, you know, to to make me feel welcome. The people there were uh, from different parts, a very diverse perspective, you know, very new influences, uh, new points of view. Basically, a uh, different, whole new chapter, including your own point of view. Oh yeah, everything Even changed. Friends as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything changed. A lot of things changed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, a bit, bit of a different exposure. Were, were there more uh, Indian colleagues there? Uh, there were a couple, but not from uh, India. They were uh, from uh, British, British-born Indians, okay. or, uh, British Indians, or, and similarly uh, uh, South African. You know? Yeah. Also, Brit also Indian, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Because to give us also before going back a bit of a in the background, like India is huge, right? So it has a lot of different um, languages or dialects. Yes. Then, yes. But. Between different provinces, uh, is it like normal people just communicating in English? Or something? Yes, yes. Mostly it's English, unless the uh, unless they find that they have a common language. So, for example, uh, Hindi would be sort of semi-common. I wouldn't say very common if you go uh, state up from me. Yeah. yeah. But uh, down south, it's usually the local language. You know. Uh, okay. And if you don't know the local language, you might want to know the. Uh, uh, a common local language, yeah. Uh, which uh, basically in India they're more than bilingual, trilingual, I'd say. You know? mm. Would you say that majority of people in India would speak Hindi? A lot like would. A lot, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't know the exact number, but a lot from the north uh, would, would speak Hindi. Maybe even uh, down south, uh, to up to Hyderabad and, and mm -hmm. Kerala, maybe. Yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of Hindi, Bangalore. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of it's a lot of. Um, communities there right yeah yeah i remember like and now exactly because it's like great variety of everything so now actually india is the uh most how, how many was the population yeah, most 1. 4, most yeah, one popular, yeah? yeah 1. 1.41 1. i think 1.4 something yeah more than china now i think starting from the last year yeah now, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, they just overpassed china in terms of population yeah. 1.4 billion people and then china around the same 1.4 billion mm. people, right? in uh, raffles for the first time in shanghai so there was a lot of people around you say like maybe not many indians in that community no okay so you were hanging out with uh, oh just the colleagues whoever were whoever mindset we clicked you know i think it wasn't about in, just the indians or you know, a particular nationality it was just the mindset your mindset clicked didn't matter where you came from did you have many chinese friends at that time? of course of course i still have yeah, uh, a lot of colleagues uh, were, were there. Were they also teaching? Uh, they also teaching, yeah, yeah also teaching. Uh, so and, and they were very helpful, especially getting me into, uh, well, getting me, helping me find a place. You know, I'm still in touch with the, uh, a lot of them, even though they've left China. All right. Okay. So after some years, like you were here, like did you? kind of like made this place home like at, at what point did you decide it or maybe i don't know if you've decided that's a good question to say already i'll i think I, i'll stay around. i actually I, I do want to call it home the problem is the visa requirements are not so straightforward you know? i don't qualify straightforward for a green card because it's very difficult the requirements are very high 
uh, and so it has to be based on my work. Right. So that's that's an, an issue. You know, in, for example, in Singapore, I had a uh, permanent resident card, had, uh, but something like that doesn't exist here. Uh, but it's not very easy to accessible. You know, yeah. that's the problem. But yeah, if I had that pathway, then it would have been clearer to to buy a house and or at least put a deposit down for a house. Yeah, yeah. But because yeah. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. It's true. Like as long as you're working here, uh, then they just keep renewing the contract, of course, with the with the work permit and stuff. But it's not as easy as in other countries. Like you just live there for probably four years, five years, or whatever, and then you actually can apply for mm. the permanent right residence and even make some exam at some point and then claim the passport and stuff right like in some oh, that, that's, yeah, that's here no. definitely definitely yeah. not the case yeah yeah and also even if you get i was talking to aj actually oh, okay. the day, well like a month ago and then he was saying like even if you get married uh they're gonna keep checking on your marriage yeah, status yeah, yeah. Uh, but apparently now with the marriage visa you can work. Yeah. Oh, he said that now you can work. I, oh, I thought yeah. that you cannot work no, with a marriage visa. You can apply for a green card, and once you get a green card, you can work. That that. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, I think he got the green card. Ah, then, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Then fine. Yeah. Then. Okay. So then after the some years, then you felt like okay, maybe I'm just gonna start calling this place home. Or uh, yes and no. Huh? And yes, because uh, I do feel like it, but no, because the operational logistics it's always at the back of my head you know so how often you go back to india oh uh, twice a year if possible mm -hmm. you know, we have the holidays yeah. during covid none yeah but exactly. uh, yeah so the experience of uh, many of the expats here in uh, shanghai particularly during covid was a little bit tough because um yeah it was like first of all super difficult to go out and then second of all the prices were like super expensive right um so a lot of people couldn't go back home for like probably three years right my case was also three years just and a half three mm, and a half mm, mm. she didn't go for how long for also three years yeah okay. correct otherwise what's the logistic is it easy to go oh yeah very easy oh, that's no what problem. are the flights and the price very reasonable we used to have direct flights from uh, from Shanghai to Delhi. Shanghai, Delhi? Yeah, Delhi, Chennai, my, my hometown. Okay. Uh, or Shanghai, uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, Chennai, my hometown. Very okay, nice, very, very nice. Very, uh, very good connections. Okay. How many hours Shanghai, New Delhi? I think seven. Now, now we don't have flights, that's the problem. Between the two uh, countries, direct flights. So, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit... And about the prices? They're reasonable. I think right now I can get a ticket for about 5,000 or even less. 5,000 yuan? Yeah, return. Okay, so less than a thousand dollars. Yes, yes, less than a thousand dollars. Okay, so nine hundred dollars, something like that. The round trip? Nine, yes, seven, nine, fifty, six, uh, no, uh, eight, even eight hundred. Eight hundred, yeah. Eight hundred dollars round trip. Okay. That, even that, seven, if you, if you really, really push it, seven. Yeah, not bad. In, I know, maybe even six, maybe even six <laughs> is possible, depending on maybe if you take it. Maybe even five with a little discount. Yeah, yeah, if you take the budget airline, you know, it's possible. Okay. Yeah, I know, for sure. Okay, well, that's good. So then you were there in Ruffles for seven years, right? Nine, um, eight, eight, around eight years. Eight oh, right. Years. So you were seven in Singapore, yeah. then nine here first, yeah. the first job yeah, in yeah, Ruffles. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, then what happened? So you, now you changed jobs or how uh, was that transition? Oh, uh, the uh, you could tell student numbers were going down. So uh, one day they asked me to leave, so I left. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I'm still grateful to Michael to give me that, <laughs> give me that opportunity. Uh, to get the little, the little cheers rush. to Michael. Yeah. Like the clip. Yeah. <laughs> cheers to Michael. <laughs> okay, that's no, but seriously, so I mean, you I, apply that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what 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 year was that? Was it 2000 and maybe similar with me, right? So 16, 17, something like this. I came three months after you. Oh yeah, yeah. So that should have been like 16, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember <laughs> because you arrived there to Palm Beach. One quarter after yeah. you. So here we were working because then we moved. So you move after to uh, Le Rush which is a hospitality management school, which we said previously, they have uh, the headquarters in Switzerland and they have a campus as well in Marbella, Shanghai, and I think they have one in Abu Dhabi or yeah, yeah. something else. Uh, in India now. Oh, in India? Yeah. Where in India? Uh, that's a good question. I think Pune. Pune. Yeah, I think so. Pune is where? Just down uh, Mumbai, just b below. 
Okay. Yeah. I think I think we were there or I was there. Puna. Yeah, yeah. I think you're probably there. Puna. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pune. Yeah. Pune. Uh, to be correct, I mean. Do you speak some Hindi? Yeah, a little. I speak Hindi. Well, I speak Hindi and Tamil. Tamil. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So where is precisely Tamil used? Oh, in my hometown. Uh, which is Chennai. Tamil. Uh, yeah, yeah. South Tamil. India. Yeah, Tamil Nadu. Uh, Tamil, Tamil is also spoken in people from that region, you know, so you can also say that people from Sri Lanka speak Tamil. From Sri Lanka, okay, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Yeah. So in Sri Lanka, maybe some areas they would speak Tamil. Yeah, Tamil. Even well. in Singapore, they speak Tamil. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, it's one of the official languages in, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Sorry, what? Ma Malaysia. <laughs> uh -huh. Malaysia as well, they speak Tamil. In Malaysia, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess really like whatever things here in Asia is like a lot of variety of everything, right? Uh, especially, I remember in Singapore, uh, it's all little neighborhoods uh, of everything, like little India, yeah. little yeah. China, correct, 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 little correct. thing, little that. And and Tamil is a very um, ancient language, very strong, very ancient, ancient. Um, Respected language. Yeah. So, would you say that's your mother, your mother tongue? My mother tongue is English. It's English. Yeah. Okay. I mean Anglo-Indian, so that's how. That's why it's English. Anglo-Indian. Yeah. Okay. So after Anglo-Burmese, if you really want to know. <laughs> really. I claim it back. <laughs> okay. Burmese. <laughs> so after the um, uh, after English, so uh, what will you speak better, Tamil or Hindi? Uh, Tamil. Tamil. Yeah. Tamil. But with your mom, for example, you speak English. English. Yeah. Okay, so that's... Uh, so when I leave the house, I speak Tamil. When I go to uh, the north, I speak Hindi. And when you come to China? Mandarin. <laughs> Actually, he's very good at uh, Chinese. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. And can you tell us why are you very good at Chinese? I've been here for so long, I have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> that's my excuse. Oh, so yeah, it's been... Uh, uh, you know, like having a closer uh, experience. That's well, well put. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but that's good. Actually, that helps a lot because mm. you learn a lot of, um, you know, even the slang or words that you wouldn't find in the dictionary, right? And then uh, or the accents and yeah. little things mm -hmm. that, yeah. And also, if you want to piss someone off in Mandarin, oh, that was very helpful. <laughs> very, very helpful. That was very helpful. Have you get into this? At home only. Trick is at home only. At home only. <laughs> Chinese, huh? So at home now you speak Chinese? I, I mean, I speak half and half, English and, and Mandarin. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But so it's like, an, uh, okay, so a little bit of a mix of everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. So then we were there working in La Roche. And, um, so, yeah, so how do you see your experience as a, as a lecturer there? I'd say uh, the, the, high, the similarity between Raffles and La Roche was the people. Right, I mean, we're sitting here today because of you and because of Laros, actually. You know? uh, the people, the mindset was was very nice, you know, with the people we hung out with. And in that sense, I'd say I was very fortunate, very fortunate. And I have to be grateful for that. Yeah. To meet um, you know, people who helped me expand my uh, horizons. Yeah. Right, so, uh, it, it's very true because uh, we used to hang out there, like the weekends or something, right, in my place. and. These guys, the one that I had a video with, uh, Pascal, Camille, and some others, you, <laughs> they would come over the weekend and, you know, just, just have conversations because it's so diverse that we all have, like, constant questions about each other cultures and, you know, like, languages and stuff. And what's your style of working? What's your style of communicating? Um, all of these different things yep, right, that you yep. find here with the, with the people that you get to know. And this is in the... Kind of like in the expert sphere, uh, spheres, would you say? Or uh, it's also beyond, like... I'd say uh, it, it's a bit difficult to answer that, but I think what helped was uh, we were at, this, uh, at a workplace which uh, had sort of values that we identified with, and in that sense, we also had maybe similar concepts or similar ideas, mm. and that's the same throughout. But even if we didn't have, we were able to communicate and hopefully work through it. You know? yeah. I think that that's the key point. Actually, that reminds me that um, David wrote a paper, remember? Uh, in the Russia, friendship. And then you, you wrote a paper about about the friendship values yeah. in yeah. the workplace. Yep, yep, like that? yep, yep. Socialization. Was that the title? Socialization and friendship. Okay. And uh, as a you know as a as a tool to help reduce turnover. Huh? Not as a tool, but as a solution. 
you have to yeah, so you have to collect uh, data yeah. analyze the data and write a paper submit yeah. it to a conference what was this conference oh uh, it was in finland i think Vil uh, yeah finland i think so helsinki Oh, right. Uh, sorry, oh, Vilnius, I'm actually forget one in somewhere, somewhere there. Oh, Lithuania, maybe. Uh, Lithuania, maybe Lithuania, yeah, yeah, Lithuania. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember, yeah. So that was there. Yeah. Right, and then you were, uh, yeah, it was good because he wrote a paper first there in La Roche. And then I saw, like, um, they were actually supporting this uh, paper, mm -hmm. right? like a pay international oh, trips and stuff for you to share the values that actually you learn from. Uh, workplace because it you know it speaks good about it right and then i said okay great so i, I also wrote a paper <laughs> and it was about the gig economy at the time i was teaching uh, yeah the principles of economics at the time and then um so yeah so i wrote a paper and i went to bangkok to thailand yeah yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. As well. yeah. but that was that was thanks to you because then i saw like okay so you know if that's uh, supported yeah two more oh, yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Yeah. I'm teaching in high school now, also business management, quite similar. But uh, again, the same, quite similar pattern, COVID hit. I could see that uh, students' numbers were reducing. Uh, same thing happened to me in my previous school. So I decided to try and jump before they asked me to leave, you know, because I didn't want to have the same issue of, uh, of one day saying, hey, bye-bye, you know, you got to leave. Yeah. And that go goes back to the question of how, how whether, I, whether we can call this home. And the problem is, I think we still cannot, well, at least I cannot, because the moment they say bye-bye to you, you have two, two weeks to leave, you know, or ten days. Yeah, things can really change so fast here. And that's a little bit of a certain uncertainty that yes. we need to live with, in a way, right? Yeah. So, I mean, everything looks good, great, but then sometimes you hear stories of people like, they just kind of have to go. Yes, yes. Ambition, yeah. And then, so, kind of like need to be always, you know, a little bit uh, cautious. And of, of course, I have Roro as well, you know, and I can't Roro just leave. Is, uh, doc. Yeah, I've been with 15 years, I can't, I don't want to just, I cannot just leave like that. You know? Have you traveled with Roro? Oh, no, no. No. Oh. So when you travel, what do you do with it? Well, uh, I put him in a hotel. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, a kennel. Yeah, kennel. Yeah, kennel. Right? Yeah, can, like a little hotel a lot of kennel, for dogs. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. oh, right. Yeah, a nice, nice place. Like a nice little treatment. Yeah. He gives to Roro. Actually, Roro is like how old already? Fifteen now. Fifteen years old. <laughs> He's living, living with you the whole experience of yeah. our yeah. childhood. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so now you're working there in um, high school. Yeah. But I believe this is an, how is that called, like an IV program? IV program, yeah. So what does that mean? It basically um, is holistic education, you know, very holistic. Um, it looks at um, uh, giving students not just textbook knowledge, but also context, you know. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's a great program. I think it's a great program if one wants to make use of it. Okay. Yeah. So the students are they um, international, Chinese? Uh, most of them are uh, local <laughs> students. Uh, very good students. How big is your class? It depends. I mean, class sizes have gone up now to 21. But I used to have six or seven. Oh wow! Which is a very, small. very good uh, number for a class. Right? You know what every student is doing. Okay. That's it. Was that like a big difference from uh, the rush to? A very to big difference. Now? Very big. In what big. sense would you say? Because the other guys, sorry, there was like a college. Yes. And it was a private college. Yes. Um, so now, how do you now consider this? Uh, this is. Uh, very competitive in the sense that students are uh, applying to university. So, so this is basically before and after. La Roche was after they had finished the high school. This is just before they get into a college like La Roche, you know, or into a university. So it's very, very competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also because um, they're preparing for this big exam that is called yeah. here in China, the Gao Gao. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Man. Cheers. We're saying cheers with a little chin dao. Uh, chin dao. <laughs> So they have to students prepare for this big exam that is called how does it go? Gao Kao. So what is the Gao Kao? Gao. To be honest, I don't know much about it, <laughs> but I just know the IB exam. I mean, yeah, it's just like the preparation yeah. for all the Chinese students. Yes, that's true. To get into the best universities. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, like in the US, they have the Ivy League, right, program? Yep, yep. yep. So here in China, they have something that is called the, they used to have many programs, like to put the best universities, some sort of in a ranking in, uh, in China. But now I think uh, they stay to this latest program that is called, I think, 211 or something uh, yes, like that. Yes, yes, yeah. Universities, correct, correct. 211, yeah, so correct, correct. 21, and then they have like all of these uh, best universities in China. Uh, they teach all of these different subjects and stuff. So at the university, and the students, when they're doing and preparing the Gao Kao, based on the rating, uh, they can choose one of yeah. the best universities around China, right? And uh, Raffles, for example, is one of the 211 universities, it's just down the road here. Uh, and that's where it was located, you know? So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something like, you know, during the Gao Kao, which lasts like, I think, like two to three days, mm -hmm. students, they're really focused on studying around, like, you know, even um, they close some of the streets for the noise, not to go through the buildings where the students are actually, you know, taking the exam. So it's quite like, I mean, it's, it's, it's taken very serious, right? Because, so what I've seen is like a lot of parents as well, um, they put a lot of effort during the early years. So for the student to actually try to get it to one of the good universities, right? Absolutely. So it's kind of like the future. Yes, that's true. What are the best universities, you know, in China? Oh, it's a put me on the spot. Of course, uh, <laughs> uh, Ching, Ching, I only, I only can say uh, two, yeah. Tsinghua. Tsinghua University, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you have uh, Jiatong. Jiatong University. Yeah, Fudan. Fudan as well. Yeah, Fudan. Fudan University. Tongji. Tongji University, yeah. Uh, East China Normal University. East China. That's where uh, Dimas is studying. Uh, oh, wow. Very good. Chinese course, yeah. Uh, nice. He'll do very East well. East China University. Uh, and then we have... Uh, Shanghai Normal University. Oh, that's where we were before. Yeah. Uh, SNU, Shanghai yeah, Normal University. Yeah, and then we had Because Dong the campus was inside SNU, the Le Rush campus. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Raffles was in Donghua, Donghua University. Oh, Donghua, okay. Yeah. Yeah, these are some of the top uh, universities. Yeah, also, and probably, um, how did they say? Like, Wuhan, uh, Wuhan Universities. Okay. Uh, Wuhan, yeah. Yeah, Wuhan University. And allegedly, Maybe the best Beida or yeah, yeah, correct. No, Beida, right? yeah, 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 correct, correct. Beida is a Beijing University, which is uh, Beijing. So these ones are kind of like the top yeah, ones yeah, to get inside, yeah, right? Like, yeah. I would like to get into one of those. <laughs> I do like to PhD in. Yeah, you know, uh, in um, yeah, I, I was one time in a Beijing University. Mm -hmm. I, I just went like just to just to visit, mm -hmm. to see how was the campus and stuff. So of course, big, right? So there's a lot of things going on there in this university. It's quite nice. But I think, you know, it's different because if you're looking for a job, um, in terms of finance, uh, maybe wouldn't be as well paid as some other mm -hmm. private universities. That's always the uh, cost benefit yeah. analysis we have to do, you know? Yeah, like yeah. missing opportunity, opportunity yeah, cost. Yeah. So, yeah, true. Also, there are, I think there are other ways to, uh, if you are from one of the top universities, you can outside work, consulting. But also because it has like a great reputation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then probably the salaries wouldn't be as, as high, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. uh, As in other like private schools. Uh, but here there are some good private schools also, right? The universities in yeah, Shanghai. Yeah, yeah, Like they also have the NYU. Yes, New York University. yes. So that would be good. Are you looking into new options soon? No. Not really, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't say no to a good opportunity. Yeah, so what's what's ahead? What's in the, in the plans now? Because now you're working in the high school, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. good, doing great, uh, having holidays, having the free time, yeah, yeah. Time, having the great, but then uh, where you're looking to? Staying in China, uh, going back to if, China? If I stay in China, then I've got to look at a long-term plan, no? Yeah. Mm. Buying a house, Which for example. Be? I mean, buying a house, which, but then, of course, it's a chicken and egg. You know, if I buy a house, I still can't settle. I cannot settle. I mean, and the house, if it helps, it would be something I could I could look into. But it doesn't help, you know. So at least, I mean, till not day, it doesn't help. How much would be the price of a house in a place not that expensive in China? I think Jiayuan, Jiayuan, yeah, right, I like Jiayuan. Where we stayed before, a hundred and forty thousand. Sorry, one point four million. 1.4 million yuan. Yeah. Okay. So that would That's be how much in dollars? Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. But for me, it's still a bit. No, no, no. I mean, of course. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, well, also considering this is Shanghai, but it's all the way south in Shanghai. It's probably like 40, 50 kilometers oh, yes. downtown, right? Yeah. So it's not the downtown. Now here, here we are in, in downtown. Um, but. The I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the difference you can tell in Jaiyuan the rent is two five, 
here the rent is what 20 yeah. 20 20,000 yeah to talk a bit about prices in Chaoyuan when we were there like uh, well Chaoyuan is the south of um, Shanghai, it's a yeah. compound mm -hmm. that is in Fengxian in South Shanghai which is probably like 45 kilometers easy, from downtown easy, easy. so there the rents were about for a three-room apartment mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can find for 3,000 yuan right which would be how much in, in dollars about four hundred dollars. Like four hundred dollars yeah. for for um, yeah per month for. I, uh, but I paid half. less. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you always get the best price. No, 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 no. no. I just had the budget. You're gonna speak Chinese, right? No, <laughs> you talk a good Wangxi. <laughs> three, three. I think I paid three hundred dollars. Yeah, okay. three hundred. So something like this. Yeah. And here in downtown, how much? Is it? Uh, I think ten like times. A, ten times. Yeah. Ten times. You can find some nice place. Well, not some nice, but one room, one room place, um, for probably a thousand dollars. Maybe. If no, you're lucky because it's like six, 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 seven. seven like seven. They're, they're paying like six, seven. No, but yeah. if she resigns, you want. Uh, oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably starting at a thousand for a one room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here in downtown. Yeah, you're lucky. If you're lucky. Yeah, and then it goes like one, one five, two thousand, two, and, and then above, yeah. right? So you can find like quite nice places with a nice views and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that would be one thing for you to consider stay in China, maybe get a place, but... It doesn't help with the long term. Yeah. You know? Also because if you buy a, a house in China, have you looked into it? Like, uh, I have looked as, into as it. As an expat, uh, yeah, I have do they have into the it. same rights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can buy a place, no problem. It, the only thing is... Uh, Expense. It's expensive. Yeah. Is it the same that it's not really for sale, but it's kind of like for long-term rent, like 70 years or 80 years when you... Yeah, buy yeah, out? I think so. Yes, yes, 70 years, correct. 70 years. Mm -hmm. I, more than enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make it more yeah. than 70 more, huh? okay. um, I'll take half of that. Yeah, because here in China, like, you don't really own the land, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, so just buying the rights for staying in that piece of land uh, yes, for yes. the next probably 70 years yeah, or something okay. and then apparently because this is a, a a law that it was said long time ago yes. so i don't think people have even seen through the end of the 70 years uh, yeah interesting maybe That's some, good, maybe so, so when they reach point. probably in few years the people that they bought the houses some years mm. ago, when they reach the 70 years uh, what i've heard is like um, they can rebuy it, mm. but I don't think at the same price of, of, you know, I think it's, I don't know, like lower, much mm -hmm. lower, because you can like correct, correct, buy correct, another correct. house. Again. I think you should pay the tax. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. So, okay, so that's one thing that you're thinking, um, to stay probably here in, in China, right? Not India? No. I mean, I mean, Why not? of course, um, that's one option. There's always an option. I mean, um, my mom is there. And my, <laughs> so that, yeah. that's my only link back, you know, unfortunately. Okay. I have some friends, but uh, after so long, they're uh, not too much in touch, you know, so ah. just my mom. So after that, it's anyone's game. So before, when, you know, when you were closer to the people there, like to your friends and stuff from high school, and then, uh, what did you think about you coming to China? How, how is that view from the Indian perception, let's say? Oh, well... Uh, breaking news, I don't have too many friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, I mean, they, of course, they were quite curious in the beginning. I was like, oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. They were quite curious in the beginning. Uh -huh. And then, um, it just got accepted because uh, I've been there for so long, you know. And I think people are very caught up with their own lives. So, it, it wasn't novel for too long. You know? may, maybe a talking point for two minutes, three minutes, and then let's go for dinner. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I think we speak about now when I go back home, you know, rather than the novelty of being abroad. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. I mean, it happens probably to everyone. At the beginning, when you're here, like, there's a lot of questions, right? But then you start getting familiarized with things that you don't even probably are too excited to keep yeah, sharing. Yeah, yeah. Because it becomes like your new normal. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah. Correct. Uh, when something is your new normal, probably you don't feel like super excited. Mm. Even sharing something, right? Have you, uh, one thing I remember, um, you had your, your mom coming here visiting China for the first time, right? What is she? Not for the first, she's come four or five times already. Oh, okay. She, she likes it. What yeah, she, she thinks. She likes it. No, she likes it very much. You know? uh, 
<laughs> okay, so uh, now our friends just came. Uh, so just to wrap it up because we're gonna order some dinner. Um, is there anything that, um, I don't know, like um, you would recommend to people coming to China for the first time? Since you've been here for such a long time, so what are the expectations for the first time? Um, what are the good things that you've learned? Uh, what things maybe to avoid? Uh, you know, since you've been here like in China for a long time. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I think avoid having a, a close mentality, a siege mentality. You know? it's, it's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, uh, bring the uh, WeChat, Alipay, you know, oh, all right. those apps Everything that can help you. Ready, huh? Yeah, uh, maybe bring a, a translator in case you don't <laughs> translator, think, yeah? Yeah. A translator. Uh, all, all this is on the phone. There's no cash anymore, so it's all on the phone. Uh, if you must use uh, the apps in the Western world, then the VPN is necessary. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I I think this is a great place. Yeah. It's very safe. It's it's a yeah. In terms of safe, actually, honestly, like I, I mean, another safest place doesn't really come to my mind. Yeah. As, uh, Singapore, maybe. Maybe Singapore. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Probably right. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, now we have the camera there. It's yeah. a little bit far. I yeah. should have zoomed in more. But I mean, everything is just kind of like around, and Absolutely. nothing really happens. Yeah, so. it's, yeah. I mean, like I said, people are welcoming as well. You know, uh, you try to speak a little bit of the language, and they're very yeah. happy, very pleased. You know, so yeah. obviously, that's a good that's a good point that you just mentioned now uh, before we finish, because you said that people that is coming here for the first time. They need to have a bit of an open mind, mm -hmm. right? Uh, being willing to embrace, uh, you know, differences or trying to learn from the experience because it's not for everyone at the same time, I should say. Because people who come here and if they don't adapt, uh, you know, to you know, their comfort of home or something like that, they, they might actually hate it or don't like well, it at all and then they just... Absolutely, it goes know? for any place, any, any uh, place you visit, you know. I've heard the same thing about people going to India, for example. They like it or they don't. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Same, same yeah. for India, I would yeah, say. Yeah. I, in my case, it was one of the best places that I've, that I've actually seen. Probably because I was traveling with the right uh, chip in my mind. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it becomes probably very challenging. Oh, it is. It is very challenging. I mean, when I go from the south to the north, it's also challenging for the first time, for the first few seconds, maybe, first few minutes. I think it's always the the, yeah. the, the mindset. I guess that's the beauty of traveling, right? Like to try to have these experiences and yep. uh, yeah. you know, being able to to live them through and yeah, just experience and then compare what you actually have back home or yeah. uh, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think with that, um, I appreciate your time for this little... No, now we're going to have dinner here. Thanks uh, for the beer. We're just waiting here. Yeah, the beer is on the house. <laughs> well, thank you. I think we just we just wrap it up in a, in a good way. Yeah, I just want to say, great to meet uh, Antonio. Good representative of this uh, country, Mexico. But <laughs> yeah. Generally a good person, so good representative of humanity. That's the key point. <laughs> That's the key point. <laughs> okay. Yeah. After that, we wrap it up, so thank you. Okay. You guys enjoy. Uh,